welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. This edition's top stories. The Safa Lewis Community College transitions to online learning amid COVID-19. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority adopts a more tailored approach to marketing the island. And the 2020 National Arts Festival to be staged virtually. The Safa Lewis Community College is finalizing arrangements for the new academic year in September. As is the case worldwide with tertiary education institutions, the college has developed a COVID response policy in keeping with the guidelines set out by the Ministries of Health and Education. A key element of the COVID response is the pivot to online learning. More now from Jesse Leos. Faculty of the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College are currently being trained to maneuver the Moodle Learning Management System to facilitate remote learning this semester. Moodle is a learning platform designed to provide educators, administrators, and learners with a single, robust, secure, and integrated system to create personalized learning environments. The move to Moodle is part of the college's response to COVID-19 in minimizing the need for students to be at its north and south campus and farm facility. Leading efforts to streamline South CC's online offering is Institutional Effectiveness Manager, Dr. Kathy James Springer. From a lot of the research that we did last semester, that our faculty have challenges with regard to setting up and doing everything that they need to do online. And we essentially have taken that, that approach where we're not going to leave any faculty member behind. Everybody, everybody's on board and everybody needs to move in that direction. And so what we have done is set up a month training. We've actually pushed back the date of reopening um, teaching so that we can spend enough time with faculty actually helping them develop um, their, their courses and set up their courses online. A two-week Moodle training for students has also been scheduled. This extended orientation and onboarding process will take place from September 7th to the 18th, 2020. Back in June, the college decided to pivot towards online instruction to reduce potential disruptive scenarios like disease outbreak or natural disaster. This for us is a really important dimension of the shift towards uh, a new modality and a new mode of operation. In many respects, we have been moving in this direction already. What COVID has done is to accelerate that process. And so we think we're in a fairly good um, position. In fact, relative to some of my colleagues who have been talking with in North America and Europe about what they're doing for their new academic year, I think we are in fairly good stead. That was college principal Dr. Keith Nurse. Meantime, practical learning at South CC, which includes labs, clinicals, and field work, will continue as required. So the hard sciences, whether you're doing the chemistry, physics, environmental studies, those courses which have technical or practical components in the in um, um, auto mechanics, you would have to do garage work. In, um, refrigeration, you may have to do work. Um, the number of the culinary arts, you would have to do um, kitchen work. So a number of those courses have practical components, and so therefore the students would have to come to the campus to do that, and so um, waivers would be made um, for those students. Protocols for students and visitors who must visit a campus include the use of face masks except bandanas, hand sanitization at building entrances, and strict observance of social and physical distancing. Online classes at the college will officially begin September 21st, 2020. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority has adopted a more tailored approach to marketing the island amid the challenges of COVID-19. Lisa Joseph explains. The reopening of St. Lucia's tourism sector, though a shadow of its pre-COVID performance, is showing promising signs of a steady rebound. The island averages 2,500 seats per week from international and Caribbean airlines. As more hotel properties open, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, the SLTA, is tasked with increasing the load factors. Beverly nicholson Dorsey is the Chief Executive Officer. And so our sales team have been um, very diligent in working to re-educate the, the travel uh, agent, the consumers, um, doing webinars, having sales calls. We've had to switch through virtual 
uh, trade shows, uh, but we at all times are pressing on ensuring that the messaging is on uh, a very responsible way of marketing uh, tourism. So. The appetite for travel remains lukewarm as countries around the world feel the impact of COVID-19. Restrictions, lockdowns, job losses in the millions, and health system pressures weigh on the decision of potential travelers. Tourism Minister Honorable Dominic Fede says it is the reality that tourism officials must work through. As they look at you know, what's going on in the world with this pandemic, the media coverage, I certainly not in favor of tourism uh, at this present time. When we look at what's happening in our source markets, um, you have travel restrictions in like Canada, for example, where um, Canadians returning back home would have a quarantine requirement. Um, I, we saw that the opening of certain European markets um, by one of our source markets, when they removed the um, quarantine requirement for some European countries, there was an outbreak in a particular European country, and that would not have sent a lot of confidence. So a lot of people, I believe, because of a host of issues, are uh, perhaps saying, let's wait this out, allow the virus, the global pandemic, to um, settle itself down. And I think that what we're seeing is most people are saying, you're better off um, doing something domestic and then let's allow the global pandemic to settle down before we make plans about a vacation. It's very expensive to travel. The SLTA is continuing focus on the island's best niche markets, including honeymoon. Mrs. Nicholson Doughty says there's evidence of market interest in St. Lucia, and the SLTA is using every avenue to keep the destination top of mind. While um, low factors at this time are not certainly where we don't, uh, we wouldn't want them to be. We're looking at what uh, the future lies, and that pace is trending up in terms of inquiries um, about St. Lucia. Not COVID specific, we have seen a 20% increase in people searching for St. Lucia on our website. And so that means that they're planning ahead. They're looking at what the possibilities are uh, in terms of their travel. St. Lucia is top of mind. So our sales team is out there. We're really looking at uh, family markets, wellness, our, our cultural and heritage events. These are all areas that people are inspired by. In January 2020, before COVID-19 unleashed, St. Lucia, for the first time in its history, recorded over 400,000 stay-over arrivals, an increase of 7.1% year-to-date. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The National Arts Festival will take place this year with a difference. The Cultural Development Foundation launched the event, announcing its digital format due to COVID-19. The festival is an annual and unique celebration of St. Lucian art history and features an eclectic mix of work from artists in various genres of the arts, including dance, theatre, literature, spoken word and visual arts. Executive Director of the Cultural Development Foundation, Ramona Henry Wynne, stated that this year will see an unprecedented change of dynamics in the organisation of the National Arts Festival due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that the world was going digital. A lot of the artists were going digital. So the CDF was forced to go in that direction to ensure that we delivered across the borders, br bridging that divide. You know, a lot of young persons, when they, heard, when they hear the word culture, it seems like something that they cannot identify with. And we thought this was the opportunity to put it out there digitally in a world that the younger persons can identify with, in a way that they can understand and appreciate the work that CDF was doing. And we thought, what a wonderful opportunity and time to do this. The Cultural Development Foundation is working closely with community individuals and entities, as well as the corporate community, to ensure the success of the Arts Festival. Ria Modest is a representative of the Horizon sponsor, St. Lucia Electricity Services, Lucilec. We applaud the CDF 
for its own creativity in finding ways to continue its annual outreach despite the challenges that the COVID-19 has brought upon all of us. This is a tangible demonstration of the resilience of the creative arts and industries that has been as much a hallmark of their existence as the respective art forms themselves. In many ways, this commitment to deliver on your mandate against all odds reflects how we feel about what we do to be the energy that powers our nation's success day in, day out. 24-7, 365 or 366. So we're happy to be able to power Outreach 2020. The official launch of the National Arts Festival took place on Thursday, August 27, 2020 at the Cultural Development Foundation headquarters. The contestants of the Miss Independence pageant on Thursday gathered at the Prime Minister's official residence for their prize-giving ceremony. The nine beauties who graced the stage on February 15, 2020 for the staging of the Miss Independence pageant happily gathered to receive their respective prizes six months after competition. The delay caused by COVID-19 did not lessen the significance of the moment. Mrs. Rosella King is the chairperson of the Miss Independence Pageant Committee. For the third consecutive year since this committee undertook the execution of the Miss Independence Pageant, it has continued to grow, not only in attendance numbers, but in caliber, class, and high standard. Again, ladies, this would not have been possible without your unwa unwavering participation, which started officially with the sashing ceremony and ended with the crowning of our Miss Independence 2020, Akia Chico. The other contenders were Agnita Paul, Miss Miku, Ashel Evans, Miss Ansela Ray, Candice Jean, Miss Castri Central, Demisha Theodore, Miss Roselle, Elodie Octave, Miss Grosley, Nadej McLaurin, Miss Castri South, Nicole Herrell, Miss Soufre, and Roche Sincere, Miss Canaries. The young ladies were encouraged to believe in themselves and become leaders in all aspects of their lives. You should use this opportunity you were afforded as a focus of national pride. You have been given the opportunity to enrich not only your own lives, but the lives of others. This is the perfect opportunity for you to fulfill your ambitions and develop yourself as human beings. You have been given the opportunity to serve as an ambassador within your communities and by extension, your country. You may choose to do so by probably being part of a charitable organization, whether you become a member or just giving of your time and talent to the less fortunate in our community. Akia Chico on the night of competition took the crown home to Labry for the second consecutive time. Winning is an important thing, but the journey and the experience teaches you so much more. I, inv I have involved from a little shy girl into this confident and fearless young lady, mainly because of my participations in pageant shows. I've learned to set goals and go for them, but at the same time, be understanding and considerate about other people. My mom and the rest of the family are always supportive and they keep me grounded. I hope that my journey, which has just started, can be a motivation to other young ladies from my community library. After all, according to my former school principal, Mrs. Agatha Japanil, library girls must shine. The experience, she says, has changed her life forever. The prize-giving ceremony was held at the official residence of the Prime Minister. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy informed residents of Saltibus, Jetwin and Environs of the commencement of a pipe relocation and replacement exercise. This is a collaborative intervention between the Water and Sewage Company, WASCO, and the Department of Infrastructure as part of the ongoing Saltibus and Jetwin Roads reconstruction project. As a result, residents will experience periodic interruptions in their water supply. 
This pipe relocation and replacement exercise is scheduled to be undertaken over a period of three months. The Department of Infrastructure and WASCO apologizes to the residents of Saltibus and Jetwin for any inconvenience caused. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Creole. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Monsieur Ta Anissio. Monsieur Madame Department qui nous responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ici GIS et Télévision Nationale. Parce que NTN qui présente nouvelle en Creole présente Primus Hutchinson. College de Afelwis au monde Ka informe public la, en général, ki la pani pièce la vérité ke yo ka hose pri l'ekol, kom ki pawet asou uh, media social. Alo, college la, ka informe, ek ka bay asyons la ki pri l'ekol weste mem kointe ye avan, pou les etidyan ki ka vitoune l'ekol. College la fe kopon, se program lan ki yo hose se pou les etidyan ki ka suiv etid professional an ling certifikasyon. Pe exop, etid social Etid de justice a fait crime et etid des affaires loi. Collège là aussi informé public là avec un informé public là qui est présentement qui a adressé application pour l'année 2020 pour 2021 puisque si sa application j'ai trouvé acceptée et que là c'est ça qui est plus important pour adresser devant ça là c'est malade de corona pour les étudiants suivent etid par computer pour tout programme a pas dit étude en laboratoire et travail qui a fait à qui a conduit des rôles collège là collège là aussi il y a un programme qui a jalongé à ça pour les étudiants venir au courant et puis au point sûr et que ça a commencé le 7 ou le 18 septembre programme qui a apparaître à son computer online qu'on a dit qui a commencé le 21 septembre secteur de industrie fixe cette ci qui continue pour recevoir assistance technique de la République de Chine de Taïwan en résultat de maladie corona qui a affecté la production de la pays. Le gouvernement et puis l'assistance pays Taïwan en bas projet de producteur de la en cette ci qui conduit avec à continuer pour procurer l'acceptance avec qui continue pour procurer l'assistance technique pour les cultivateurs et les pharmacies à cette ci en assistance en ligne de contrôle vers mine éducation et pour encourager les femmes pour venir plus sensible pour la production de vie à un plus haut degré. La production de la vie a une capacité pour amasser à peu près 20 millions de dollars tous les années. Ce que le président du ministère de l'Agriculture, Barry Morfelsie, déclare que le projet a fait assurer que les femmes ni une façon pour nous salaire qui a entré pour nous aider la famille. Ça, c'est plus que 651 la famille en Kaye qui a trouvé un bénéfice, éducation, santé, à parmi l'autre bénéfice. Selon M. Félicien, ces femmes ont aussi employé l'autre travail qui n'est la famille. Alors, plus que 2000 personnes ont expérimenté ces bénéfices en bas programme secteur Big Le ministre qui a une position pour faire agricole pour le moment, on va Herod Stanislas, montrer l'appréciation et expliquer ces diverses assistances que ces femmes ont aussi vrai. Par exemple, support pour recouvrir les plantations figures, pour aussi contrôler ZEB, pour contrôler les maladies de Black Sigat Choker, nourriture pour plan fig, construction 47 établissements pour chipper fig, 15 places côté les pharmaces à acide pour manger, 50 prévus, 130 articles de protection, 
yon mil liv pou ekwi efamasyon aso twa vay amputasyon figyo ek yon san ven twi. An nou apisa de stans deklare ke sa se apam plizi asistans ki le fama jatoube pou se delan ekip ase aba apoje fik sa la. Ambasade pou peyi Republik China Taiwan Peter Chen di ki Gouvernement Setlisi ek Taiwan ka swim jid nasyon yoni pou ede le fama pou augmente produksyon. Situasyon finans ek AIFO pou pote pli pou asistans pou fama peyi ya. Se o mania te pou ekou an biwo minis agrikultu le 20 aou 2020. Desan etidyan hod vilaj an slawe. Ja wou souwe gwan asistans des atik lekol an preparasyon pou sezon lekol nef la. Minis des afe turistik ki osi se representatif de kaye parleman pou an slawe e kanawi on yon ap Dominik Fede deklawe ki badan ti so moni sa la ka fet pou asiste les etidyan pliz ya 100 mil dola ja te pase ou anje l'ekol, ase di fwa pa wè ski ka wepresate. Wepresate fla di osi, l'ekol as la wè, ja wè si vwe kompyouta anko, apwe an pil tan san servis sa la. I di, le pa wè osi wè si vwe asistans pou te sa fè yi pousib pou zan fwa yo wetoune a l'ekol. Wepresate fè di di osi, pou sek lan ni gouvernman te asiste les etidyan as la wè, e kanawi pou ni transportasyon pou vwe aje a l'ekol, kom yi ka koute bie che pou yo sa te sa pe pri pa sa yi. On nou a fe de, we make ki, yo se ja double program pou swe le zetidyan a se de ves le kol. Ek se konsa, nou a tou a bout nouvel la, mou ka mesyo otan pou ka gade, mou ka bou yon invitasyon. Ou jene pi mou a konsidye, konsa fe la vi, le mou a pou se tou a lot nouvel a koyo la. Pou sa, te mou a souete tout moun a bon finis mou a semen, ek chonje ki nou a la fev dengi a mou ven a pe se tlisi, alor, Pe asiwe ki ou jete tout dlo, ek pa kite dlo espose ou an kayo. Mou kawe mesi ou tan, ek sa se le mou vye pas ou pou anesi ou. Mesi apil primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7pm with a repeat at 7am. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine. Music